Good morning, friends, and welcome to church on what I like to call Twixmas Sunday, which either means we are in between Christmas and New Year, or we have eaten far too many Twixes. I'll let you decide. You're probably wondering what's going on uh, behind me. Well, it turns out it just so happens to be my birthday tomorrow, and that's apparently the age that I will be. But at the moment, I'm still 49, just to let you know. And thank you very much to my friends here who surprised me with that today. There will be an opportunity this afternoon to donate items to the food bank here in the church drive between 2 and 3 p.m. And this will be the case every Sunday whilst we remain under Tier 4 restrictions. The Extraordinary Times will appear in your email inbox shortly after this service. And we will unite in prayer together wherever you are today at 12.30, beginning with the Lord's Prayer and continuing with our own private personal prayers. Well, we are in Tier 4 again, so we are not physically together this morning. However, as the Church of Scotland's National Worship Team says, we may not all be gathered in the same building, but at this time, when we need each other so much, we are invited to worship together from where we are, knowing that God can hear us all and can blend even distant voices into one song of worship. So let us sing together that well-known Christmas hymn, See in Yonder Manger Low, with the chorus, Hail thou ever blessed morn, hail redemption's happy dawn, Sing through all Jerusalem, Christ is born in Bethlehem. Let us come before God in prayer. Let us pray. Most loving God, whose gracious gift was given to lowly folk on Bethlehem's hills that night, grant to us, like them, to see the dark clouds riven and earth resplendent with a heavenly light, to know the wonder of that holy birth, the coming of the love of God to earth. God of all, all creation is invited to praise you, giving thanks to our creator. Yet we struggle to be grateful 
when we see loss, fear and destruction in this world. We struggle to praise when we are afraid to look at ourselves before you. We struggle to turn to you when we are distracted by this season. God with us, all peoples are invited to come close, welcoming you into our lives. Yet we struggle to walk with you day after day in the mess of our lives. We struggle to welcome you when you come in those different from us. We struggle to look ahead with you into another year of uncertainty. God of all, you know all of this and still you love us. God with us, you know all of this and still you come, inviting us to come close. So set us free from our fears and our struggles. Heal us of our hopelessness. Forgive us our mistakes. And open our hearts to know that you are with us, your spirit filling us and your love guiding us. This day and in the days to come, through Jesus, your son. Amen. Let us sing together again a favourite carol of many in the bleak midwinter. Hi, good morning boys and girls and you bigger boys and girls that I know are watching with them. Now, I wonder if you all had a lovely Christmas and maybe you received some nice presents. Yes, I'm going to talk about you in a minute. Well, we certainly did. I've got Anna helping me here today and Anna, she received some nice presents, didn't you? Yes, what was your favourite? You got a lovely bracelet. Will we show everybody? There it is there. 
She just loves it. Well, I hope you'll look after it, will you? Okay, good. Now, I wonder if anyone can tell me what's going to be happening at the end of this week. Can you? That's right. It's going to be New Year's Day. And we're going to be turning from 2020 into 2021. Now, most people start off a new year by thinking about things called New Year's resolutions. Now, a resolution is just like making a promise. You make a promise with yourself that you will do certain things or not do certain things. Now, here is a list, I think, that might be some resolutions that you could think about, perhaps. How about I will have less screen time? and get more exercise. Or I will be kind to others and even your brothers and sisters if you have them. Or I will put things away when I'm finished with them. I wonder if you can think of any others. How about you, Anna? What would you think? Oh, now that's a good one. Anna's saying what she's going to do is she's going to eat more fruit and vegetables and less sweeties. Do you think you can do that one too? I'm going to try as well. Now some people don't take New Year's resolutions very seriously. After all, they're just promises to yourself. And if you don't follow through with them, well, it's no big deal, is it? But maybe it is a big deal. You know, because a promise is a promise and it's important to keep your promises, even if it's just a promise to yourself. Now, someone who's always faithful at keeping his promises is God. And in the Bible, there is a story about a man named Simeon. And Simeon was a very old man and he faithfully served God all of his life. And he was looking forward to the coming of the Messiah. And God had promised Simeon that he would not die until he had seen the Christ, until he had seen the promised Messiah. Now, a short while after Jesus was born, Mary and Joseph took him to the temple. What's a temple, you ask? Well, a temple is another kind of church. And they took him there to dedicate him to God. Now, Simeon was in the temple, as he always usually was. And as soon as he saw the baby, he knew that Jesus was the Christ, that Jesus was the Messiah that God had promised. And he knew that God then had kept his promise, that Simeon would not die until he had seen Jesus. Here's a picture of Simeon holding Jesus. Simeon took the child in his arms and he praised God, saying, Lord, now you can let your servant die in peace. As you have promised, I have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all people. Now, there was someone else there in the temple and her name was Anna. Yes, the same name as you. She was a prophet and she was always at the temple, worshipping and praying and praising. She came along just as Simeon was talking to Mary and Joseph. Here's a picture of her. When she heard what Simeon was saying, she began praising God and telling everyone that this child was the saviour that God had promised. Both Simeon and Anna knew that God is faithful to his promise, just as he is faithful to his promises to you and to me and to you, Anna. So this week, as we begin a new year, even though it might be hard because we might not get back to school as quickly as we normally would, Let's remember that God is faithful and he keeps his promises and we should be then faithful in keeping our promises. And it doesn't matter if it's a promise to ourselves or to our friends or a promise to God. After all, a promise is a promise. Well, what, what do you think, Anna? 
Anna thinks we should pray about it. What do you think? Yes, I think so. Let's pray. Dear Father, just as you are faithful to keep your promises, help us to be faithful in keeping our promises. And we ask you to keep us safe in the coming new year. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Bye-bye. I'd like to now give a short report about Room 60, our youth project, and then we'll see a short video put together by Phil Hawthorne, our youth and community worker. 2020 has been a big challenge for most of us due to the pandemic, and youth work has definitely been no exception. When the restrictions were at the tightest at the start, we moved all our groups online. This was more difficult than we thought. When restrictions were lifted, we were able to restart our one-to-one -one support and also fitness groups, including weekly walking and cycling groups. Many of the young people were still fearful to leave their house and were not being physically active. Room 60 has managed to provide several activity days which have included horse riding, canoeing, abseiling, mountain biking, orienteering and many other activities which you will soon see in the video. Since the summer, we have been running support groups in Air Academy, including mental health awareness, craft making, and one-to-one -one pupil support. We've also been supporting Newton Primary School with pupil support and filmmaking groups. Our after-school engagement has been harder to get going, mainly due to limited space in room 60 itself and outdoor activities being affected by the poor and unpredictable weather. However, we look forward to 2021 to see what it brings. Have a look at many of the activities the young people were involved with. Wow, didn't that look amazing? A huge thank you to our many funders whose financial support meant that we could provide these opportunities and also to our funding team who worked tirelessly to secure the funding required. Let's now continue our worship with our next item of praise, another favourite of many, the Calypso Carol.
I always want to dance during that song. I hope you were all cha-chaing at home. Sorry if mine was putting you off, Dorothy. Anyway, let us hear the word of God from Luke's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 21 to 40. Jesus presented in the temple. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. When the time of their purification, according to the law of Moses, had been completed, Joseph and Mary took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. As it is written in the law of the Lord, every firstborn male is to be consecrated to the Lord. And to offer a sacrifice in keeping with what is said in the law of the Lord, a pair of doves or two young pigeons. Now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simeon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die before he had seen the Lord's Christ. Moved by the Spirit, he went into the temple courts. When the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him what the custom of the law required, Simeon took him in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and for glory to your people Israel. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This child is destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed and a sword will pierce your own soul too. There was also a prophetess, Anna, the daughter of Phanuel the, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple, but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God and spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, they returned to Galilee, to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Amen, and thanks be to God for the reading and hearing of his word. Our next song is called The Giving Song, which we will sing along with the praise band. Let us pray. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. It's Christmas. It wasn't cancelled, but it certainly was very different for the majority of us. Whatever shape it may have taken this year, the familiar story of the birth of our Saviour will still be foremost in our minds this Sunday. However, this is the last Sunday of 2020, a year that has brought COVID-19, lockdown, isolation, and devastating consequences for livelihoods, families, nations, and mental and physical health. It's a time to look back at 2020, which may include lament for losses and thanksgiving for mutual support. It's a time to look forward to 2021, which may bring hope for continued vaccines and treatment. It will bring Brexit and the Scottish parliamentary elections and may bring the Olympics and the COP26 Climate Change Conference. As with every year, this year and next will also include significant events in people's lives. There have been many challenges, which will continue into 2021. The ups and downs of our lives are reflected in a theme of human life and messiness, which Jesus was born into. In everything that has happened and that will happen, we have the reminder that God is with us, offering hope. In our passage today from Luke's Gospel, Although we can't be absolutely sure of the author's motives, the following seems very clear. That Mary and Joseph comply with the requirements of the law and the angel's instructions, meaning they are in touch with what God is saying in the present. That Luke links Jesus' birth with God-given promises and the resultant hopes, what God has said in the past. And he links these promises with what Jesus will do, what God will do in the future. The Torah, or Old Testament law, required a few things relevant here. In verse 21, we read that the baby was circumcised on the eighth day, which signified the formal acceptance of the child into God's covenant with Abraham, outlined in Genesis 17. He is also given his name, Jesus, a version of Joshua, meaning one who saves, as instructed by the angel Gabriel. This passage then continues with further observations of the law. The next one was for Mary. She was basically in self-isolation for 40 days after the birth. Again, a rite outlined in the Old Testament in Leviticus chapter 12, and it's called purification. Another rite adhered to was the presentation in the temple of Jesus as a firstborn son. There are echoes of Hannah's dedication of Samuel in 1 Samuel, and this ritual is described in Exodus 13. Mary and Joseph also come with the offering of a pair of doves or pigeons as required for those who can't afford a sheep. But the main focus of this text is not on these rituals and fulfillments of the law. Instead, we hear about the family's encounter with two older people filled and led by the Spirit. Let's look at Simeon first. Simeon's reaction reflects both personal and universal hopes. The Spirit enables him to see the promise of the Messiah for all peoples, fulfilled in this baby now, long before Jesus has done anything. That also fulfills a personal revelation that Simeon would see this. He has had a specific individual promise from God that he would not die before he had seen the Messiah. This is mentioned in verse 26 of our passage. 
It's reasonable to assume that he would have had ideas of how that might have come about. Quite possibly focused on a verse from Malachi, which says, Then suddenly the Lord who you are seeking will come to his temple. This prophecy goes on to present the arrival as a time of refining. The expectation at that time would have been the Messiah as an adult, a warrior figure. But instead, Simeon sees a baby. Simeon has been patient, and he is called to be patient again, as he sees only the arrival of the Messiah and not his refining ministry. Quite possibly, he died before Jesus grew up. The description of his hope and his praising of God in verses 29 to 32 echoes language from the book of Isaiah. The time when Israel was at her lowest point in exile, but God was promising hope for the future. We are not told that anything Simeon says is prophecy, but he offers prophetic-like words for the future. And in them, we see an important theme with several elements. That although Jesus will have a refining role, he will not be the type of Messiah of popular expectation. His focus will not be on defeating Rome, but exposing the hearts of individuals. And we see that suffering will be part of his ministry. And then we have Anna. We are told that she is a prophet who worships God basically 24-7. And she is also led by God to this baby. She also sees God's promises fulfilled and shares her excitement with everyone she meets. One important purpose that both Simeon and Anna serve in Luke's account is that of legitimate witnesses. Under Jewish law, verification of the truth required at least two witnesses, according to Deuteronomy chapter 19. So Luke is making clear, both concerning the original situation and in his account to his readers, that godly and devout people, Simeon and Anna, who have heard what God has said and are responding to him, both testify that Jesus is the Messiah. The passage then concludes with the family's return home to Nazareth in Galilee. They leave behind the formality and status of Jerusalem for an area seen as distant, but actually en route for much of the wider world. Jesus' upbringing is then summarized in an idealized sentence, verse 40. And the child grew and became strong. He was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was on him. In normal times, there is a familiarity in the story of a new baby being welcomed and blessed by others, and who will often want a cuddle too. The pandemic at the moment is limiting contact new parents and babies can have with others, and is making celebrations and rituals for important life events a lot harder. This is the last Sunday of 2020, a year which has brought changes. That is an understatement to us all. Simeon and Anna both recognized God's acting to fulfill promises, changing things for all peoples. Mary and Joseph's lives definitely changed. While this reading offers testimony to divine promises fulfilled, those come through a very human story. In Galatians chapter 4, Paul says, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law. But it's best expressed in the Luke passage that we read today. God is born in the messiness of birth that requires Mary to be purified. Mary, Joseph, and Jesus come to the temple in enough poverty to only offer pigeons. They meet old folk in the multi-generational worshipping community. 
the old man takes a cuddle of their baby and shares emotional words of hope and warning. They are told that there will be pain and struggle to come. They return to their town, to working life, bringing up a child, a child who will have cried to his mum and dad before crying out, Abba, Father, to God. It's a very human story of God coming into a world when the time was right. The Roman occupation made communication and travel simpler when there was news to be shared and also kept Jewish expectations for a Messiah active. It's a human story amongst the realities of politics, religion and poverty. It's the story of a baby being blessed. It's a story that can be recognised by all people and it's meant for all people. There is a lot about today that will have parallels in maternity services, political leadership, struggles and cries, poverty and need, multi-generational communities. God was born small and helpless, crying, needing fed, needing nappies changed. We have probably all held a newborn baby in our arms, but imagine holding this very special baby, the infant God. And as you look down into his eyes, like Mary and Joseph, you marvel at the wonder of it all. With Simeon, you praise God, for you have seen God's salvation, the light of the nations, the glory of Israel. Yet with Mary, our heart aches, for we know the story. This child is born to die, to give his life for ours. And like Anna, we give thanks. Our hearts, with her heart, burst with joy, and we shout, he's here, he has come. God's baby, the Messiah, is among us, our Lord and our God. This baby is our hope, our hope for the future. A year ago, I also preached on the last Sunday of the year. And we looked forward to 2020, not having any clue about what the year would actually bring. I mean, could it have turned out any differently than we had expected? And we are most definitely not out of the woods yet. And how we long for how it was a year ago. But the hope and promises we heard a year ago still stand true today. Nothing can separate us from his love in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Not coronavirus. Nothing. And that promise is for you. And we know God keeps his promises. He kept his promise to Simeon. So I will finish today with the words that I used a year ago. God has got this. God has got you, God has got me, and God has got Newton Wallace Town Church. Let us pray. Loving God, as another year draws to a close, we give you thanks. This has not been a normal year, but you have never left us. How good to know that your words are eternal. As another year beckons us on, you call us towards it in a jumble of anticipation and fear. We reflect on all that has been and what is yet to be. How good to know that your presence is a reality. We bring you our thanks for this life and the life which surrounds us. We bring you our thanks for the folk we love and the folk who challenge us. We bring you our thanks for your presence in our lives, for your outstretched hand, your constant care, and your unending love. We bring our thanks for all that is possible, for justice, mercy, and integrity, for, and for those who dare to shine your light. Lord, we seek your light in whatever darkness befalls us. We ask too that we might be that light for others 
and that through our actions, others might come to know of your love. In Christ's name, amen. The Bible tells us to give thanks in all circumstances. And so we will close our service today by singing a song of thanks to such a well-known tune. And let us virtually hold hands as a church family while doing so. For all that you have done. In unity we'll stand as one, as family we'll go, shoulder to shoulder, hand in hand, into the great unknown. For all that you have done for us, for every battle won, we'll raise a song to bless your heart for all that you have done. And the blessing of God, loving Father, newborn Son, and living Spirit, go with us, and to all those we are given to love, this day into 2021 and always. Amen. <laughs>